Hey everybody, it's Charlie Hall from Polygon.com and I've got with me today Danielle Riendo. How are you, Danielle? Hey, 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 I'm doing great. I'm excited to see this dead in Bermuda business. Right? Well, let's just get right to it. There's there's a little bit of an intro sequence. We might as well just dive right in. Like I was I was telling Danielle before we uh, sent the sent the stream live, I've only really played enough of this to know that it it literally functions on my computer. So we'll all kind of <laughs> Well, I'll kind of play this together. I'll start up a brand new game and All right. uh, we'll see how this goes. All right, I'm excited. Ooh, oh, yum. Nice. Now, when last we were in the Caribbean, Danielle, um, I believe we were an African American physicist that okay. was playing as a. Um, uh, a household servant for someone in a in a banana republic somewhere. What was that game that we were playing? Oh, yes, that was uh, Sunset. Sunset, okay. yes, it was great time. Great time. That was a very similar color palette, but Ber uh, Dead in Bermuda is actually a fairly straightforward survival game, of all things. So right now okay. we are gathering our survivors, crying a lot, recovering okay, from the good. shock. If I was going to crash land an airplane, by the way, that's probably not where I would land it. I'd probably maybe go for the water. I don't know about yeah. you. Yeah, you want to aim for water, you want to aim for... You know, I, I mean, I suppose if you're crash landing, you might not have much choice, unfortunately. Well, you but know, there's a lot more water goes. in the when you're flying over the ocean than there is land. It feels yeah, very I mean, intentional that's... that this pilot put it right into the island. That's correct. <laughs> Maybe the pilot was, had one too many uh, mimosas that morning with that's brunch. entirely possible. The pilot yeah. is not among our survivors, conveniently mm -hmm. enough, so he's not here to ask him. Pretty much everybody on board... Uh, went down with the ship except for this small collection of like five or six people okay all uh, right alice seems to be the the matriarch of the group and she's kind of cool. leading us around the campfire kumbayas here as we all get acquainted I like Bob's sideburns i have to say those are some good sideburns right there how about alejandro's hair here oh he i love alejandro's hair he's 32 good manager at the holiday resorts Alejandro is, is a pretty good looking dude, I think. Got a little crescente in him there. Yeah, a little crescente going on. Winters. That's, oh, Dr. Bethany Winters. All right. From Jolly Got Old. Got a doctor. Cool. That's always very helpful to have on your desert island. This is Yuri. Yuri. Oh, Yuri doesn't. <laughs> oh, I see. I see. Small village in Russia. Quite the rogues gallery here. And then Yulia. Oh. Or Julia, she is uh, fairly ominous here. I don't, I don't want yes. her to have to silence She's me. She's got for a forever. femme fatale thing going on. And then there's Jacob. I think we all have a Jacob in our lives, don't we, Danielle? Yes, oh, we sure do. I know how to survive. Oh, oh man. Yep. I, I think Jacob has read a lot of uh, the army, you know, survival field manual, perhaps, and and maybe never been in the woods. I, but... I think he might be that type. He did get us some stuff, some salvage before he uh, tied up his boat, his well, uh, necktie good. around his head. All right. Well, that's good. I'm happy about that. I'm going to say hi to some folks in chat here. Hey, Ted Bates, uh, TC Odina, Tick Donina. Hey, Just Jason. Hello, Polaku. Hello, Up Over Games. How's everybody doing today on this fine Friday? Hey, Himaril, Experiment X, and LM Nova, Nova to Nova. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're just kind of going through the tutorial here. Again, this is some of the stuff that I've already played through. There's there's various locations in the map. Um, and you just kind of assign, you know, your workers to these various spots on the map. Uh, move three characters to the explore slot. What we're going to do is we're going to take Alice, who already ha came prepared with her hiking boots. Excellent. We're going to send her off into the jungle with Bob. And I think I think little Ileana is gonna gonna join them. Okay, that's that's good. That's really a good place for the young, the youngest member. You know, she's she's sixteen. She probably has a lot of energy. Well, here's what I figure though, Danielle, and that is that explorer um, Alice will be a little less likely to to take risks if there's a child along. That's a good point as well. Yeah. So we'll kind of rein her in a little bit. Let's let's put Jacob oh, in Jacob. the least harmful place possible let's keep him busy crafting stuff yeah i think he would be happy crafting stuff too <laughs> one thing i did run into is I, I didn't do the tutorial in the right order and i kind of hit a 
log jam, so pardon me. I want to do exactly what it's telling me first before I get us off the rails already okay. here. Okay, yeah, no, that's a good idea. You know, survival is all about taking the right steps in the right, uh, in the right order. Hello, Ian Buck. Jacob has an impeccable taste in headgear, says Ian Buck. I agree. Quite, quite impeccable. Very Rambo. I didn't Loving notice it. the sticks that he tied in there. That's... <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's got a... Yep, I'm sure there's a survival purpose for those uh, in Jacob's mind. All right, here we are. Sure. We're going to find... We'll get some wood and rope and some, some in-flight oh, meals. tasty meal! Oh! I get your first oh, class good. meals and your, your coach meals. We got a couple of uh, yes. But when you go to the... Some... When you go to the plane, your characters get depressed because they're like in the presence of all of the the, the dead crew. Yeah, I'm sure. And yeah. so they get bummed out. So I hope that like one of the things we can invent here is a shovel. Um, and I mean that as respectfully yeah. as I can because just bury the bodies. So we don't have to worry about this. So yes. But that is also they're going to rot and they're going to attract animals. Yeah. So like <laughs> so top of the list for me. <clears throat> And that shovel going, yeah. And now we are researching stuff. Good. And helpfully, we've got just enough stuff to make one of those shelters, so we'll be doing that soon. But also, our scouting party has uncovered a new area of the map. Ooh. And so Excellent. the map itself is actually pretty big. Um, we're going to open that up next and kind of take a look at it. Uh, but check this out. All of these different areas of the map you can kind of uncover. And there's little events or items and things that happen there. So I'm really excited to get it's fantastic. exploring and the I'm, island. I'm assuming that stuff is also a bit random. So you're never having sort of the same experience twice. I have no doubt. All right. So select the new available recipe in the workshop. Okay. There we go. Choose Hello, that. Hello, Goose Bremer, Mr. Baloo 5. How are you all doing? Those sticks are for hearing a volcano explode, says Goose Bremer. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And some other and folks yes, are... And it's a PC game. And, uh, and other <laughs> folks are asking if it's available. Yeah, it just came out on Steam uh, yesterday, I believe. So and it's it available is not right now. Really access. It is a full game. <laughs> yeah, that's where <laughs> that's they got my attention. advertised it to us is a survival game that is not in early access. <laughs> Which is pretty cool. Yeah, that was a great email to receive. I'm like, Really? Oh, you finished. I want to play this. <laughs> just not to say that there aren't wonderful early access games. There's just, you know, a whole lot of them. So it's nice to see something that uh, in this particular genre that is a uh, complete experience. And the studio actually is is known more for um, kind of serious games, and they actually specialize oh. in the medical industry. So making kind of serious games that are about challenging topics in the medical industry. Um, and this is the first, I, I think it's the first of their games that I've seen on Steam. Okay, that's that's really interesting. I mean, so far so good. It seems like this is a pretty competent survival game and not, you know... Uh... Trauma Surgery Simulator 2015. Right. This is where I hit a log jam before. I didn't use the coffee cup when they told me to, and it kind of derailed mm. my tutorial. So here we are. I'm already further than I was in the last tutorial. All right. 10 of 13. Uh, don't forget to use your special items. They'll make your life many times easier, and they're available to everyone. Well, that's cool. All right. Let's go look at that new area. Yeah, this looks pretty cool. So I played a game that this is uh, recently that this is a little bit recalling called Discourse, uh, which was also, you know, a bunch of kind of goofy survivors, a little goofier than this, a little more cartoonish than this. But, you know, survivors on a on an island and you have to make decisions about who does what and, and where they go and what they do. I'm getting a little bit of those vibes here, but certainly that's kind of a trope in, in games and in this genre, the, you know, the island of survivors that all come together from different backgrounds. I uh, remember I that game. It was more of a uh, kind of a uh, you know, WASD kind of exploration game, though, too. A little bit, yeah. There were a lot of sort of adventure, almost point-and-click adventure elements in it, you know. You would always be sort of making decisions about who does what and who goes where and what you're doing. And then there would be a little bit of an adventure sequence where you're walking around actually looking at things. So that was a pretty cool game, too, uh, from Alchemy Labs. Uh, and this 
This seems a little bit more serious, but it still has kind of a cartoon feel to it, which I, I really like. And also, this is really pretty. <laughs> so let, uh, let's see what happens here. What else do we find? All right. Oh, good. Their exploration opened. stats are going up. I like that. We might have actually uncovered maybe two spots on the map. I don't know. We'll have to see. Hello, Boston John. I'm from Boston. All right, now here we go with a little more of the story element. All right, good work, everyone. I know it's hard, but we scavenged some food in that damned plane. Good. The plane of the damned. Well, it only lasts for a few days. Well, Bob, don't be a negative Nancy. <laughs> Who knows how to, I bet Yuri, do, oh no, Jacob does. Of course Jacob does. Well, Yuri, Jacob I'm, does. I'm sure Yuri does, knows how to do many things, but none of which he's going to tell us about. We'll need to find yeah. or craft some tools. You're darn right. Yeah. Let's share the food. Alejandro's smart dude. I love how Alice never takes off her pearls. <laughs> <laughs> we got to have standards here on our deserted island. Yeah, she's like, I'm, I'm exploring, but I'm also beautiful. Don't worry, we can make juice out of fruits. Oh, good. Yeah, that's that's pretty smart. Keep our vitamin C levels high, not get scurvy. That's right. I'm sure everybody's going to have some, some beautiful tans soon. <laughs> oh, God, Julia. Oh, no. Maybe someone lives there. Oh, she's the negative Nancy here, clearly. <laughs> I would expect Yulia would be able to just tear it apart with her bare hands. I know. She seems like a fierce lady. Experiment X. We will be doing Until Dawn Part 2 shortly, but we have not fixed a day just yet. Uh, and Taro Kuniten, I hope I pronounced that correctly, also welcome. Does the hearts mean that they're falling in love with each other or that their health is going up? I we should be able to health. find out soon. I've, uh... Yeah, I, I am assuming it's health. But, uh, you know. Distributing the meals. Alright, good. I wonder if Yuri just, you know, is sick or something. He's just not happy. He oh, seems pretty unhappy. We've actually got two items here that looks like we need to cook them first, or they're going to make people oh, sick. Oh, yes. yes. Non-perishable. Perishable. Okay. Next. Cl drag and drop meals on characters, then click next. I did that. We're good. Alright. We have to worry about fire intensity. Oh, goodness. Oh. And water supplies. Oh, are they all depressed and tired? Well, they're not too bad. Moody. Alice is moody and sleepy. All right, but not depressed. Alice seems to be the, the upbeat one. That's good. She's kind of the leader. Oh. All right. Perishable food has a chance of deteriorating each night, which I do not mm -hmm. enjoy. I actually just lost some fish. Maybe we can make it into oh, bait. No. Tasty meals degrade into meals, which degrade into barely edible stuff, which finally turns into rotten food. Uh, fires I decrease. I wonder if you can put salt on the fish or something to make it last a little longer or dry them out. That would be good. Dry stuff out and make it last. I've actually taken to smoking recently not like tobacco but like smoking meats oh yes and i will make things you, last longer oh yeah it's 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 been a fun hobby so far maybe we can smoke <laughs> some fish as well good luck well, that's a good and idea. have fun well thanks oh. tutorial we'll see you in hell thanks for those last tips <laughs> last tips is so ominous <laughs> all right what do we got out here in the jungle another tile has opened Oh, excellent. What's in the box? Oh my god, uh, is that shipwreck? I don't know. Inspect that box. Made of wood. Well, you can at least use it for firewood, if nothing else. Well, we can search it, and then we can scavenge it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let's try that. Who? Maybe Yuri. Scavenging, Stealth. he's got a rating of 60 for... He does? Yeah. Look at this guy. All right, <laughs> get on it, Yuri. Yuri right one for this. Hmm. <laughs> I failed. Oh, oh dear. No! What? Oh. Yuri! What was that? Oh what my what God. was that? It was a giant monster scorpion? That was weird. Did it have a hook no. or a claw of some kind? That was strange. That was, that was pretty freaky. Well, Yuri. Sorry, bud. Got some it just seemed supplies. like Yuri was right for that job. You I know. know. Alright, well, we're going to have. Scavenge wood. 
Strength 59. Here we go. Rip that box apart, Bob. I want, I want go, its Bob. tasty wood. Why are we using stealth? Monster attack. Oh my god, these are actual monsters. Okay, They're, this is a weird island. <laughs> I, I'm tending to agree with you. I did not expect the skeleton weird. bat. Yeah. Well, you got a nail. That's good. <laughs> I bet you could use that for crafting. Maybe. <laughs> So useful. Like arts and crafts, or there we go. <laughs> uh, right, what do we got at the workshop? Choose a crafting recipe. Nothing. Hey, new. the dark one. Hey, Tolvo. Welcome. <laughs> dark one says Alice will feast on the corpses of her less hardy compatriots. <laughs> and Tolvo says, to be fair, if I was stranded on an island, I would be depressed. But then again, I'd have more to do with my brain. Yeah, it's probably a balancing act. I want to say that that's sure. a Toivo. There, Danielle. That sounds like a youper to me. Is Toivo, that... not Tolvo. Toivo. To Toivo de youper, eh? We are you doing can, PAX Prime me. coverage. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of folks sure out there. Sure are. Yeah, we've got some video folks. We've got some news folks. We're going to have plenty of good stuff on the site from that. All weekend long, I believe. Have you ever been to PAX, Danielle? I have. Yeah, I've been to many a PAX. Mostly PAX East. Okay. Uh, but I've been to PAX Prime a couple times as well. Uh, yeah, last time was actually a couple years ago, though. Have you have you done a lot of paxing? I have never paxed, not once. Oh wow! Yeah. Hmm. I used to go to Pax East every year, and I'd bring my students because I, I teach, and especially when I was in Boston, I, I taught you know, on the ground, so to speak. Now I teach hybrid classes, but I would always bring my students, and we would go to the sort of, uh, you know programming that was for how to get into the industry and, and, and that sort of thing, and then I would let them loose and, and play games, and it was fun. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Got some wood, some rope. Excellent. Another few tasty meals. Tasty meals. That's good. Axe! Oh, Ooh. that's going to be very useful. You can do a lot with an axe. So what have you played this week, Danielle, that you've enjoyed? Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Um, I probably can't talk about it much, but I played a lot of Forza 6. Oh, you <laughs> did not. I did. I sure did. And that video will be going up uh, sort of, uh, I believe, on Tuesday. That one's going up. But, yeah, I can't talk about it much, but I'm pretty sure I can say that I played it. Uh, I've been playing a lot of Mario Maker. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I am in love with Mario Maker a little bit, but I can't say anything that sounds reviewy. So I'll just, I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just say I'm really enjoying it. I have played uh, quite a bit of Yoshi's Woolly World. Uh, that video just went up uh, today, in fact, and Zelda Triforce Heroes. That video also went up today. I've been playing a lot, Charlie. That's awesome. <laughs> How is Yoshi's Woolly World? Oh my lord, it's adorable, and it's quite good too. So. The levels that we played this week uh, at Nintendo, and we just just put up the, that video, and I might even pop in a link. Why not? There you uh, go. We're actually auto-scrolling levels. So this this Yoshi game has a little bit more Mario DNA in it, it seems. You know, a little bit harder, a little bit more precision jumping and, and being quick and, and sort of having to keep up with whatever's going on in the level, which is really fun, and I quite enjoyed it. Uh, so yeah, very, very cute game, and uh, kind of satisfying that Mario itch as well. Not that... Not that my Mario itch is particularly unsatisfied right now with all the Mario Maker, but I, I can't get enough of good 2D platformers, so. Nice. Yeah. How about you, Charlie? What have you been playing? Besides this awesome game that we're playing right now. I was actually playing some of the Pillars of Eternity expansion. The oh, White yes. March. And it was kicking my butt, March. Danielle. It was <laughs> oh, It was not great. No. I was getting flummoxed by the, the opening rounds of that um but i actually oh, okay. i kind of broke through and hopefully i'll be putting a video up on that next week i, I okay. very much enjoy that game and wish i had more time to devote to it oh here we go we need some tools to help us gather resources in the jungle since our resources since the resources we can scavenge from the plane crash are not infinite new crafting uh. recipe gathering tools all right all right all right <laughs> but then me. I've also been I've been seriously hooked on Duskers, which oh, were, yes. which we actually played live last Friday. Like I just I cannot stop sucking that at Duskers and it doesn't awesome. bother me. It's just so much fun. <laughs> yeah, that looked really, really cool. And that was basically kind of a roguelike with the xenomorphs from aliens almost. Not quite, but that was sort of the idea or the aesthetic it seemed of that game. But your control interface was a command line. 
And so mm-hmm. all of all of your drones you're moving around with your keyboard by typing them in DOS like commands. It was hysterical. It's oh, amazing. So Toivo says, also, wait a second, you're a Bermuda? Do they mean just Bermuda or the Triangle? Because either way, tons of trade and the rescue should come relatively fast. I think we might be an alternate universe. It was this big, here. It was this big <laughs> crescent, crescent-shaped island. I don't know what geological yeah. formation with like one of those big lagoons in the middle of it. Didn't look like a Bermuda that I knew. Yeah. Ian Buck says, given that there are monsters around, I'm willing to accept that rescue might not come for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. And Toyfo's asking, why does that guy have antlers taped to his head? We're all wondering that. Uh, We're all wondering. Please, there are <laughs> sticks. Uh, Boston John, what part of Boston have I visited? I used to live in Boston. I lived in Boston for seven years. I lived in, oh my God, so many neighborhoods. Uh, I mean, I lived in Jamaica Plain. I lived downtown. I lived in sort of the south end. Uh, God, I lived in sort of on the Brighton line for a little while. I lived right near Fenway Park for a little while. I I have lived in so many places in Boston. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> this is getting weird, Alice. Alice, oh, yeah. you're being Alice. a little weird. Alice is starting to lose her, her <laughs> tightly composed, pearl wearing. Hmm. It's enough chatting for tonight. That's right, Alice. That's uh, maybe you'll like, take it. Take a. Take a break there. Oh, no, this is interesting. <laughs> Plus 10 to Alice's opinion about Winters. Minus 10 to Winters' opinion about oh. Alice. Oh, my. Winters' yeah, depression that's... goes up. Oh, no. She's depressed because she feels like the leader is, uh, you know, maybe losing it a little bit, I oh, think. Oh, no, we need, to, we need to have, like, a, a, a an event for our friend Alice so that she can kind of perk yeah. up a little bit. I don't We've got to get Alice. There. Well, if somebody gets sick and she heals them. There you I go. Imagine. So, but maybe don't make anybody purposely sick, because then if they die, she'd be real depressed. Danielle, so, who should I risk. have Alice hang out with at the fire? Oh my, maybe Yuri. Yuri. It seems like chatting just makes her depressed. So maybe if she just kind of chills out with Yuri and is calm, or maybe you know, maybe Ilya. Maybe uh, wait, I'm not pronouncing that right. Ileana. Ileana. Okay, there we go. Winters is really depressed and very tired. Yeah, we got to fix that. Wait, All right. Tolvo, is that not how do you say your name? You just, you just let me know in the chat and I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it right. <laughs> also, hey, Akuma. Is it really uh, Tolvo? Oh. It might be Tolvo. I'll be darned. I, I take it all back, Tolvo. <laughs> <laughs> you just let me know. I, I will do my best. Also, hey, Tiro Newton. Hello, Cabal people. We've got some Cabal friends in, in the chat. My uh, this is where my Twitch channel is the Cabal, so awesome. Always happy to find folks. Maybe Alice can find some happy pills in that first aid kit, says Ian Buck. <laughs> oh, oh, we nice. have some of those. Uh, let me now. Thank you for reminding me, Ian. Right. Hang on a second. We're going to use an item. What do we got here? This is. I don't know if these are. Tell me what this is, please. There we go. Painkiller. Nope. We have a psychology magazine. Psychology magazine. Very nice. Plus five to discussion. We're going to give Ileana the psychology magazine. She looks precocious yeah, enough. She's, she's young and she'll get it. She'll enjoy it, perhaps. There we go. Discussion is up to 65. We may have made a good choice that. here. Psycho Mag. I love how it's called Psycho Mag. And it is Tolvo, apparently. All, All right, Tolvo. Right. You got it. Well, now I just need to go listen to some old Ano and Toivo skits to get it out of my system. I really, I really there apologize. You go. There you go. All right. Oh, oh we got to go explore. Hang on a second. Ooh. Now that is something Whoa. we can use. Yes, it sure is. Effects are plus one machete. Thank you. <laughs> plus, plus one machete effect. Getting a machete. I like that. What do we do a with very... our axe, though? Yeah. Can we can we get some wood and to build a better shelter? There we go. Oh, okay. Gathering tools is something that we have to craft. So 15 wood. Five ropes, a machete, which we have, and an axe. We're good to go. Which we have. All right. Yeah, we certainly don't need another sleeping area. Yeah. I guess that's what we were building good on for. That. All right. How's our fire doing? Whoop, come back here. Yeah, looks... Uh, we're good. Pretty healthy. Yep, that's good. I don't want the fruit to spoil before we can turn it into water. Oh, and, yes. uh, all right, here we go. Not enough oh, resources oh. left to craft... The selected recipe, the action craft, will be oh, wasted. Oh, possibly because we used some firewood and we needed wood for the uh, crafting. Rats. Well. Oops. Oops. I'll check that. Maybe? There's nothing else to make. 
Oh, <laughs> so, I see. I see. Well, that's that. Hopefully, I didn't so Charlie, throw the axe in the fire. Yeah, what's up? Yesterday, I was tweeting. I, I, for some reason, I was very stuck on this idea of, of wondering whether me, Danielle, in real life would survive for six months in a wilderness area if I had the right tools. Like, if I had survival tools and a whole backpack full of them and, and everything I kind of needed, would I make it? Do you think you would make it? Do I think I would make it? Yeah, Danielle, it the tools. you... You're not just dropped off. You have, like, a full, like, army rucksack, stuff like, you know, the things that you would have in a survival situation if you were prepared for a survival situation. You've met me, Danielle. You know how clumsy I am. No, <laughs> there's not a chance in hell that I would survive more than like a week. I would trip over something and impale myself on a snake. <laughs> on a snake's head. Yes. And then fall into the river. Yep. <laughs> on fire. Somehow. On fire. I would do it. I was asking my Twitter followers this and I want to ask the whoa, chat. Whoa. Do you think Hang the on. chat you yourself would make it? Oh my goodness. We got a we found a crazy old geezer. Oh my lord. Let's just take a moment here. He's also doing the antler thing. Do you think Jacob <laughs> What what on earth is going on? He's got, he has a taking care of business lightning bolt on his sure toga, does. and he's wearing like bracelets of some kind. And he has also no an pupils. Arm yeah, no, this guy. I don't think he's from planet Earth. All right, let's see what's going on here. I'm going to inspect <laughs> a strange old <laughs> fellow sitting right there in front of you in the, in a meditating stance, alive as a rock. Doesn't seem to have noticed you. Blue skin and a charred beard. Huh. I can't shake the idea, Danielle, that this is a defrosted, crazy Santa Claus. <laughs> well, you know, mall Santas, they, I'm sure they have some interesting traits. I'm uh, tempted to search the mall Santa. Let's talk to him first before we... Ah, <laughs> uh, discussion, discussion. Where's my discussion skills? Not going to send Yuri. Yeah, I'm probably not Yuri. Ooh, 70 oh, for Alice. Alice. 70. Yeah. Oh, God, Jacob, nine. All right, we're sending Jacob's Alice. The geezer's apprentice, says Ian Buck. <laughs> <laughs> Folks are, uh, are are chiming in with whether they think they would survive or not. Yeah. Some, some people think I would survive. That makes me happy, but I don't know if I would. Danielle, you're so strong you could rip the ears off a of Gundar. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I've, I mean, hopefully. I've never had to do that in real life, but, you know, if I had to, I'm, I'm hoping. <laughs> I don't want to hit him in the head. I'm going to try to communicate. 70%. Success! Yay! After spending time trying, you fail to understand one single word coming from his mouth, but then you start to grasp a way to communicate with him. You sit next to him in the same position and close your eyes. You try to make one with the river of words, and they are now gently flowing into your head, one by one, caressing your mind like the possessed by a higher force. You dive into a sea of words in your mind, reach the bottom, and pick up three shells. Wow. On the shells, you see three words, and they are prophecy, find, and love. Whoa. Oh my god, this game. Alice's intelligence skill just went way up. Find clues uh, about pro the prophecy. Oh, this is fascinating. I wanna, now I'm going to search him. <laughs> I want to know what's going on in here. This Seriously. is amazing. We're basically going to we're going to we're going to uh, pickpocket uh, a blue meditating dude. Yes. Oh yeah. Nice. Rusty antennas and steel pikes. Mm. Oh, they won't budge. It's probably because they're fused with his brain at this point. I think. We found healing two water. healing Ooh. waters. Fascinating. Hello, the dark one. Hello, Lucas Villar. Villar? Is this RPG-like, trying to catch up here? There are certainly some sort of RPG elements. This is definitely a survival game, but it seems that there are definitely some RPG elements and sort of the choices you have to make, you know, about what to do with any given situation. Yeah, it's very cool. Charlie, I, I would put your chances of survival higher than higher than you're saying so. <laughs> well thank you <laughs> I really i really would you seem to know quite a bit about uh you know practical matters well, thank building you, shelters Daniel. i would trust that you would be able to build a shelter i would trust <laughs> you to do that. yeah well i'll give you my secret I, I my end of the world plan is kind of yes. to shelter in place 
you know, I want to going to stay around the house. Everybody else is running around in the streets. You'll find me barricaded here in my okay. domicile. I do not intend to go far. So I don't know. I, I was going to go hiking this summer and never quite yeah. got around to it. I would I would love to go out on a big, long trip. I actually watched uh, a movie on Netflix not long ago called Mile, Mile and a Half. Ooh. About these guys that uh, guys and gals that go through the John Muir Trail for a, oh, a month. Excellent! Oh, that's amazing. I was just on the John Muir Trail, actually. You were uh, not. A couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, not certainly not for any huge hike. We, you know, we did six miles or something. But um, yeah, that's it's so beautiful. Oh my god, the Muir Woods area is um, just unbelievably, stunningly beautiful. Great, great place to hike. Uh, but that sounds cool. I'm going to have to check out that documentary as well. Oh, it's awesome. It's like an hour and a half of just the most beautiful, <laughs> the be- most beautiful uh, environmental shots you've ever seen. Oh, sounds gorgeous. I love it. <laughs> oh, Julia. <laughs> Jacob wants to torture the crazy old man. Of course he does. It's not your cozy, sheltered reality anymore. You oh, must realize Lord. that now. Oh, man, Jacob. Oof. Oh, Jacob. Hello, Hambubgerful. Hambubgerful was in our stream yesterday, too. I remember. Uh, for our, yeah, Phil and I actually streamed until dawn yesterday for a couple of hours, and we're planning on uh, going through more of that game as well. And uh, Hambubgerful is a returning friend, so welcome. Yuri Thanks dropping sure. some Nietzschean knowledge on us here. My goodness. Oh, yeah. Anyone excited for Phantom Pain? asks Up Over Games. You know, I have not played many Metal Gear Solid games. Uh, take care, Boston John. Thank you for joining us today. Toodles. All right, where are we at here? Who is the hungriest? All right, Jacob. Even though you're being creepy, we're going to give you some nice vittles. <laughs> Maybe that'll calm him down a little bit. Maybe. Experiment X, you were there too. Well, thank you and welcome back. We're uh, clearly we're doing a lot more streaming these days and having a lot of fun doing it. So hopefully folks enjoy it as much as we enjoy doing it. Or even more. Well, there's just so many games, Danielle. Oh, I don't know yes. if you've noticed, oh, but God. just <laughs> and they're all worth I... our time. Yes, that's the thing. I mean, oh my God, I, I feel like I'm playing like 10 games a a week, a swan and an owl. That sounds like a, a I don't know, a, a, a play or a, an opera of some kind. This is very beautiful. What is going on here? All right, this we're going nice. to inspect this. You stumble yeah, upon a strange, um, a strange scene: a majestic swan and an owl bickering over a bone. Oh. Behind them, you see a wooden bow and arrows. Now I feel oh, like that I'm, sounds useful. Now I feel like I'm in season three of Battlestar Galactica. I Surf know, them. right? <laughs> All right, Julia, do your stuff. Hello, Mitch Rower. Welcome. Ooh. At least we have our stealthy spy here. That's good. Exactly. Uh, come <laughs> closer? Question mark. I, I don't know what to do. Oh my god. There, there's this nothing is a left weird to scene. be done. Yeah. All right. We're I gonna have to go back loving, to camp. I have to say, I am loving the surreal elements here. Mm-hmm. It's really sort of setting this game apart a little bit, and I'm I'm enjoying that. Did you notice these carvings back here? When we oh, started this I game? didn't. What I did not. This? Can we inspect that? I don't think no, so. Think Nothing's not. interactive there. Oh, interesting. What am I Gathering short tools? on? Hmm. Rope? No, I should have everything. Wood. You don't have enough wood. Eight. Oh no! Sorry, I, I for some reason I dyslexically mixed those numbers. <laughs> sorry about that. No, yeah, no, I should be good to go. Yeah, you should be good to go here. All right, let's make some wood, please. Let's do that. Wood, or uh, binding tools. Fatigue. Ian Buck has a question for you. Do you think there's a point at which it becomes more efficient to feed them? Like if someone is only ten percent hungry, maybe you shouldn't feed them until later. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. I did that. I actually f- only fed uh, three people or four people last night. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dark One is asking a question unrelated to the game. But Larian posted a pre-PAX press tour video where they were rushing around San Francisco trying to demo their Kickstarter. It's easy to forget how concentrated the game's press is in that city. 
Yes, I know. Uh, it's because so many outlets are right here. However, they're, the city of San Francisco is losing one game journalist very shortly as I am moving to New York. <laughs> Yay! That's a good change, though, I know. I, it's it's a great city. I love it here, though. It's just a little hard, but, you know. New York is probably the coolest and most interesting city in America. Let's be real. It's, pretty <laughs> cool. it's, it's a pretty cool place. There's a lot going on there. I don't know. I used to work a lot out in San Francisco when I was back in my uh, IT sales days, and I miss that town. Oh, I love it. I do love San Francisco. But it's gotten a little bit too expensive for uh, mortals to live here, unfortunately. So, um, you know, and, and barring, barring a cool Bermudan island for me to live on, I've, I've got to be in a city for my job. So, you know. Oh, it consumed the axe and the machete. That's not great. All right, we'll see how this goes. Oh, yeah, I want another one of those. Uh, Tovo says mixing up numbers in a dyslexic fraction would be dyscalcula, Danielle. Okay. There you go. A dyscalcu in a dys dyscalcic fraction, I, I suppose, is, is what I should say. Throw Jacob at the carving and see what happens, says Kus Bremer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Up Over Games is a big fan of New York. That's awesome. Uh, saying it's their favorite place they've ever visited. Oh, Himra Hill is saying Julia, or, uh, yeah, Julia is crap at crafting. Maybe you should switch her. Yeah, that's a good mm. call. Mm, yeah. I like how Bob always kind of looks uh, a little mildly surprised. He's kind of like, oh, what's that over there? I, I kind of like his look. Perfect for an explorer. <laughs> hmm. Do you know what's in that cave, Danielle? Oh, a cute animal? Only what you bring with you. Oh. oh, only what I bring with me, which means a cute animal. Right. A cute little animal is standing in front of you, alone. You didn't notice your present yet. Looks like He's... a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> cute animal is super effective. Should I? Oh, should I hunt him or should I try and make Maybe friends? We can make friends. We could use All a morale right. booster. All right, we'll make friends. Also, um, I don't really. Need it, so you know, you're gonna get weird an answers from me on this one. I think Ileana needs a diversion here. Yeah, she does. Good, yay! You manage to get really close. You start petting him on the head, but suddenly he freezes, bites your hand, and runs oh. away into the bushes. Well, we probably want her to take... Uh, we probably want Dr. Winters to take a look at her hand and make sure it's clean if she did get an animal bite. That's definitely a column back there. Yeah, like, something's going on. Weird... There's some weird civilization... Well, it's, it's the we Minuan, tried. It's the Minuan creeps. Yeah. Evie, it's an Evie. You're right up over games. You're totally right. <laughs> Make friends capture that Pokemon, says Tolvo. <laughs> yeah, Mitch Rohrer was talking about San Francisco being too much to live there. Staying in the Midwest, it is. I can understand that instinct. I, I've never lived in a place that was not just horribly expensive. Boston is actually a really expensive city, sadly. I think it's number three on the rental market list. Of really? San Francisco and New York. Yeah. Wow. And believe it or not, it's because of how many students live there. There's just such turnover every year, every September, that uh, landlords get away with a lot of crap. Basically. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> There's no bigger sucker in the real estate market than a student. Yeah. I know this because I was a student. Just live there, doesn't know the area necessarily, and yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. Oh yeah. Next. All right, I swapped out Yulia. All right, good. Barely edible stuff, dried meal. <laughs> oh, Yuri. Poor Yuri. I see. I so see. then have you started apartment hunting or anything yet in New York? I know, sure have. Like, yeah? And it's been a little difficult from here. We've, we've had a, a good close friend kind of go to a place and take a look for us, and then... It, it, came unavailable, which is unfortunate. Uh, so we have our, our backup plan, which is what we're going to do, is I'm going to actually be crashing <laughs> at my parents' house in Rhode Island for a little while while we go in on weekends and look for apartments. That's... Now, Rhode Island's about three hours away from New York. It's not, you know, it's not next door, but <clears throat> it's it's uh, the probably best solution we can, we can come up with. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hello, Braden Bauer. Welcome. Tolvo's talking about how travel can be difficult uh, for somebody with OCD. 
drinking out of specific things, eating on specific plates. I hear that. I, I went to Japan recently, and as a vegetarian, a strict vegetarian who doesn't eat fish, that can be pretty tough, certainly. <laughs> There's fish in everything. So I ended up actually cooking for myself, and I had a great time because I was able to cook for myself, but I could see how that could be a real bummer, uh, you know, for somebody who needs to kind of have their food, you know, specially made, certainly. Oh, Up Over Games is requesting a Rhode Island accent enhancement. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, read, I'll read a couple of comments in my natural accent. Oh no, the antenna guy had a little skull next to his head. Uh, says the doc one. Uh, Gus Brema says, but big cities with students are impossible to find anything remotely affordable. That's correct. You are All right, I'll go you back to the... Me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> People find that very distracting, but sometimes they like it, so every now and then. Uh, Mitch Rohrer, no, that won't change anything about Polygon. I am... Certainly sticking with Polygon, that is, is part of the reason why I'm going there. It's uh, so I can actually be a part of our biggest office in New York. Alice is a bit hungry, moody, oh. and dangerously weak. We're taking Alice out of the woods. I wasn't paying attention, and she has become dangerously weak. Get over here. Have oh, a sit. Alice. Alice needs to chill. Oh, uh, hello, hello. Mini-Me. I am Danielle from Polygon, and the person playing this game is Charlie from Polygon. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Mitch Rohrer says, it's like D4 all over again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the accents in that game are pretty hilariously awesome. Very, very Boston accent. Now, the Rhode Island accent, in case you're wondering, is 90% uh, Boston accent with a 10% of the sort of New York nasally twist there. So a Boston accent is a little more like this, whereas a Rhode Island accent is a little more like this. If you notice the difference, there's a little bit of a nasally twinge to the Rhode Island accent. But I, it's very, I, very close to a Boston accent. Never had such a wonderful dissection of the various <laughs> Eastern accents as I have right now, Danielle. This is well, very I'm important. an expert in some very specific topics, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I would share with you my good Chicago accent, but I need a couple more uh, Millers in me before that actually sure, works. Sure, sure. Well, only if you're comfortable, Charlie. Only if, <laughs> you know, Sand but I would cancel. love to hear that when you do have some Millers. There you, know? you go. I would love to hear it. Who made the sandcastle? Nothing fancy. Chase Boss, uh, welcome. They're saying love your vids. Thank you so much, Chase Boss, and welcome to our stream. Hello, Diane Le Lebonsky. Lebowski. Labanoski. Sorry, Labanoski. Sorry, I'm trying to get these correct here. If you could all please go onto YouTube and adjust your names to the phonetic spellings, that would help us a lot. <laughs> and I, I would probably still mess it up, to <laughs> You know. Um... Yeah, uh, Up Over Games is asking if I like science stuff. I love science stuff. I'm a big dork. I am, I, when I was young, you know, when I was a young teenager, I used to read, you know, physics books for fun uh, from the library. And I'm a big life sciences person. Almost kind of went into the medical field. I was an EMT for a while and, and I'm planning to retrain as an EMT. So I, I really dig medicine, medical science, anything that has to do with space. And uh, most earth sciences as well, I find quite fascinating, in fact. How about you, Charlie? Are you, are you into science? Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, awesome. I, uh, I've had a, <laughs> I've had a subscription to Discover Magazine like as long as I could awesome. remember. I, I, okay. I have many times daydreamed about writing for them instead of video games. Um, just totally. <laughs> sciences. The sciences are generally fascinating to me. It's, yeah, it's it's so much fun to just dig into something. Absolutely. But I, uh, I actually was an English major, you know, so I, uh, I didn't necessarily. Oh, cool study the sciences at school, but I have incredible respect for those that do. What was yeah, there? I, I Go agree. Ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I was a philosophy major and psychology major with a fine art minor. I took a lot of bio classes, actually, uh, kind of for fun. Um, you know, I never was, was great at math, so uh, bio was, was good for me because it was a bit more memorization than it was chemistry. I didn't take too many chemistry classes. Uh, but I, I kind of wish I did and had a little more confidence in myself because you know, sort of as I went on with life, I kind of figured out, you know, I, I'm, I'm a reasonably bright person. I can figure this stuff out, even if it's not my first, uh, you know, my first skill or, or something. But, you know. The thing that I was always the worst at in school was languages. Oh, think, I see. I you'd see. You think with the good English skills, I'd always, I'd have been better at languages. But, I, you know, I loved Latin, but sure. I didn't retain any of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much memorization, it feels like, with languages. And, and if, if you're not a memorizer, you know, everybody has a different le learning style. It feels like that could be, that could really kind of be a stick in the mud for you. Yeah. Get in the way. I don't know if I mentioned this to you. I was actually almost a high school teacher. 
Oh, that's awesome, Charlie. Uh, yeah. English? I was going to be a high school English or speech awesome. teacher or something like that. I had my accreditation and did my student teaching and Joliet, oh, wow. actually, and all of that. Actually, a student taught down the street um, from the prison that they use in the beginning of the Blues Brothers. Oh, wow. Right downtown in the wow. downtown Joliet. It was an awesome experience, and I miss being in the classroom, but it just didn't work out for me. Sure, sure. Those things happen, certainly. <clears throat> they definitely happen. Uh, Tolva was asking if I, I can think of, or if we can think of a trans character from a survival game, and I can't, actually. Hmm. It seems like they've always kind of gone for very surface level, maybe ethnic diversity. Not they, you know, I'm, I'm speaking of sort of the royal they, uh, designers of these kinds of games. I can't even really think of, of many queer characters in these kinds of games. Although maybe that just didn't come up, or maybe one of these characters could be trans and it just doesn't come up because, you know, they're, they're trying to find water or whatever and their identity is not, you know, front and center, perhaps. Well, so many of these games just don't have characters, right? It's like... Yeah, it's just kind of... Brown or white types. dude number 1644. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's certainly true. Certainly true. Uh, but it would be cool. I mean, I would like to see that done well, certainly. I, I always like to see any kind of diversity done well. Not just sort of thrown in for tokenism, but for, you know, done with some intelligence and, and that sort of thing. So it's always now, good to see. Now, it's an article I've written, uh, or a subject I've written on a few times. But have you been following Rust at all? And kind of the a development of Rust? Yeah, I, I've actually mostly been following because of you, Charlie. Like, you're <laughs> <articles. laughs> I have never actually played Rust, so... Well, the yeah. guys that make it are, are very clever, um, and they're very engaged with what their audience I I experience is like, mm -hmm. and but yeah. not necessarily in, pardon me, not necessarily in raw gameplay terms. They're very interested in the social outcomes of their games. What they've done is they have tied to each user's Steam ID physical traits. Interesting. Including uh, race, Soon to be gender, and uh, somewhat inadvertently, uh, penis length. Interesting. I I have read about that. It's it's a very strange game, but whether whether you uninstall it or move to a new computer, you will always have the same race, gender. All of these attributes are locked to you individually by your Steam ID, and you don't that's get to pick them. That is absolutely fascinating. I think that's kind of cool because you don't get to pick these things in real life either. <laughs> this is you know? this is very true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tolo was saying there's very little trans representation in general. The only character I know of in the AAA sphere with a gender fluid character in The Witcher 3. Yes. Uh, Ileana, I think, was, was their name, possibly? Really? Something like that. Also, there was a trans character in Dragon Age Inquisition. There was a, a trans man character in, in that game. So it, it is pretty rare at this point, but there are some some games that are starting to to offer some uh, trans characters. And in both of those cases, it, it, it did not feel... It, to me, my read, I'm, I'm not a trans person, but my read of it was that this was done respectfully in both of those games. Uh, written respectfully. Maybe not from a trans writer, which I know a lot of people have had that criticism, like, hey, you know, it would be cool if like trans writers were actually writing these characters, but uh, in my... Again, my not entirely perfect read. It, it seemed like they were written with respect. I haven't spent as much time with The Witcher as I wanted to. Ellie Hall, that's right, Tolvo. Ellie Hall, that was their name. Yeah. But I keep hearing these little morsels about it, and it gets me just more and more excited about the game. I need to get a new CPU first before I really <laughs> dive yeah. into there. Totally, totally. <laughs> All right, we need to go out and forge some more. Thankfully, when I went and um, gathered tools, that allowed me to open up just that, two new foraging awesome. slots, so I can actually assign people to go forage. Now, where are those slots, though? Here we go. I think They're Yuri to... would be a good, good, yeah. I think Yuri's going to go choice. gather. You know what, Jacob? This is your moment, sunshine. Yeah. Get out there and get it done. <laughs> Watch him die on his first mission. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We're going to send Alejandro out there. He's barely injured, not even tired. Go find some things. Ooh, a little island inside here. What is this? A raft. Ooh. We're... So people are coming and going. Oh, <laughs> try to yes. escape the try island. Es I know. I saw that as well. <laughs> that was where my eye went immediately. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's inspect this thing. Clearly handmade. Hmm. 
maybe it was made by the the old gentleman that we found earlier. Maybe it was. <laughs> this is his raft. All right, Yulia, do your worst. Up over games has a question uh, for you, Charlie. What's in your rig at the moment? Uh, I've got an i5 3570K, which is not the sprightliest processor mm. these days. I do have an NVIDIA 970, which is uh, <laughs> working overtime to kind of support everything else. Sure. Um, I'm going to surf. Hang on a second. Yeah. All right. Alice is going surfing. I think she, she needs, needs a to. Boost. Did not go well. Oh, no. Aye. Surf monster attack. Oh, no, Alice. But I also need some more uh, RAM as well. I don't, I don't oh, know. Oh, no. It... They... She killed a dolphin. What? <laughs> you collide with the dolphin who is playing in the waves, too. Oh, my. That might be this the most horrible thing me. I've done in a video game in a long this, time. This went really poorly. <laughs> <sighs> oh, no. Oh, I caught some fish. <laughs> oh, you know, that's good. She got a little bit of agility there. Something good came of this. You know, she should probably bring the dolphin back to eat it if it's dead. Don't it talk wasn't to her. Yeah, don't you talk know. alone. That's well. That's a good. Well, <laughs> I love that little fire. Perhaps, yeah. <laughs> I love uh, that little warning there. Uh, let's see. Ooh, Yulia leveled up. Let's quickly get her a few more skills here. No, Hambub Griffel is making a sad face on that one. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's still. More still. You know, we haven't looked at is these relationships, though. Let's see here. Hmm. All right. All right. So these. Oh, I, I see. Now I want to play more of this game, but we've only really got maybe another yeah. ten or ten or twelve minutes in our in our stream here, unfortunately. So this will we'll have to save this one for another day. Don't talk alone. Who's going to talk with Alice? Alice oh, has been um, bumming everybody out. I'm taking Alice some, to the fire. <laughs> maybe Jacob. I don't know. Yeah, we're swapping Jacob, and uh, we're going to make these two chat. <laughs> Have a good uh, talk. Diane Lebanowski is asking us who our favorite YouTuber is. Mine is Hannah Hart. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think Hannah Hart is wonderful and hilarious. Uh, she's not necessarily a game, a gaming YouTuber, but she does this wonderful show where she does basically a drunk cooking show mm -hmm. where she talks about some issue or something as she, you know, makes something in her kitchen, and it's adorable and funny. I'm a big fan. <laughs> yeah, no, Hannah Hart is the best. I, I was actually around on Twitter when she uh, first broke onto the scene, and I tweeted. Oh, I great. tweeted with her like within the weeks after she kind of broke out oh, and became cool. a thing. She she's a she's a bunch of fun. I love her to death. She is wonderful. I really enjoy um, this guy called Sacriel. Yeah. Uh, Sacriel uh, and his his uh, I believe girlfriend um, Shannon Z Killer. Uh, they, I get into them back when I was really into uh, Day Z, but they're sure. just, they're very level-headed, down-to-earth folks that are also, like, really good at headshots, but they have a very nice. good community. The the 42nd is a very good streaming community. I know they do a lot of Twitch stuff as well, so, yeah, I like them. Nice. Nice. Uh, hello, Yaniv Kogan and... Vitor Raphael, welcome, welcome. Yaniv makes the point, I think queer characters come up more in one-person games, mainly because in many cases devs like to share personal experiences, which is some, something one can rarely do in a AAA game. Well, it makes sense. Hmm. It makes sense that, you know, a smaller game might be more focused on a personal experience than a much bigger game. Yeah. Not always, certainly, but, you know, it's a good point. All right. I know my fire's about to die. I'm going to go get some wood. <laughs> Uh, Yanni also says, Porpentine's work comes to mind. Polygon had a relevant article a while ago. Yep, we did. Not too long ago. Weak antibodies. Interesting. Oh, Sickness interesting. Sickness decreases slower. Huh. That All sucks. Right. Hey, we got some wood. <laughs> All right. Good, good, good. Nice. Next, we're going to go out for some food because we're going to be quite hungry this evening. But what did we find? This might be our last tile to uncover out here in the oh, jungle. So let's see what we find. So Charlie, after after you know a little, probably overall an hour with this game, how, yeah. how are you feeling about it? You know what? I would love Strip. to see this on uh, an iPad. I don't think I have enough good narrative experiences on my iPad. I got a lot of like sure. quick little games. You must build a boat. I've been playing a ton of that. Um, oh, what should I, I'm going to dive in search. Yeah. I'll inspect it first. 
Uh, yeah. There's something with this island. No kidding, description. Uh, but n like I was saying, I would really like to see some more uh, narrative um, experiences. The last one that I played that I really enjoyed was um, Around the World in 80 Days. Oh, uh, yes. Which was in the among the IGDA award nominees. Um, and it, well, was, it was a really fun one. Yeah. I quite enjoyed that one as well. Oh, you played it? Oh, great. I did. I played it. And then I immediately, I played it right before going to the head writer's talk at GDC this year. It was one of those awesome experiences, very concentrated, where I was like, oh, oh, I need to play this right now. And, and sort of played that and then went right to her talk right after that. And I was like, this is great. <laughs> Wine of the Gods. Whoa. For big occasions. <laughs> that, it could go either amazing. way, though. You could that get... is a big risk reward situation. Yeah. You're going to lose. You're going to either eat, drink too much, and vom, or you're just going to yeah, get exactly. sick generally. What does the rum do? Oh, same idea. All right. Rum bottle. Oh, man. Alcohol could go either way, I suppose. Yep. It's, that's, the, uh, that's the very important life lesson that. Uh, <laughs> Dead in Bermuda is giving us. <laughs> uh, Charlie, uh, I'm sorry, Go Goose Bremer is offering some uh, an iPad game for you. Um, King of Dragon Pass. King of Dragon Pass. All I'm right. Not sure if it's on iPad, but uh, assuming it's on iPad, I see. Lifeline is a new narrative game that's very good, apparently. Cool, cool. Oh, Head Up Games. I'm oh, sorry, Up Over Games. Excuse me. Uh, heard by 80 Days from Idle Thumbs. We we talked about that a lot. <laughs> we sure did. That was fun. <laughs> I just really liked how it um, created its story. I thought it was really impressive how it um, just really built on each move and decision that you make. Yeah, that was super well done. Super, super well done. New oh, Mitch Rover has a good point. wonder if alcohol works better for certain characters than others, which would make sense in life as well. I wonder if there's a trait really good at drinking that you can unlock yeah. or something like that. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure some of these folks perhaps have it. Um, yeah. This is pretty cool. I'm very intrigued by, by what I'm what I'm seeing here. I could get really into this game. <laughs> Are you okay, sweetie? All right, we need to like send Alice back out to the woods. She is weirding everybody out. Brave little girl. You are oh, not alone. Oh, I, I think she's trying to be helpful, but she might be being weird. <laughs> but you know, if he's so angry at you and you're afraid. Oh, God. Alice, the pearl. She's literally clutching her pearls. <laughs> Alice, Alice here. <laughs> you're innocent, my dear. It's heartwarming. I don't know what you're implying, but it's starting to annoy me. It would annoy me too, I Ileana. Good night, miss. Maybe, maybe, so maybe Alice needs to escape the island. Maybe... Uh, Maybe we chose the wrong one for that. Too bad, uh, yeah. Too bad about that one. <laughs> uh, well, Danielle, thank you so much for joining me on the stream yes. today. I think that this uh, was a good way to spend a, a decent little Friday afternoon. You got any fun plans for the weekend? I think so, too. Yeah, I'm actually going to be on Retronauts this weekend. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I mean, it won't be out yet, but uh, I'm really looking forward to that and doing a little boxing. So that'll be fun. As you are wont to do. Yes. So Certainly. If you, if you would be so kind as to reach across your screen there and hit the little off button. Thanks, everyone. Right. And we will see you next Friday or before. Sounds great, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. And take care. Always come back to Polygon for all of our streams. We're going to be doing a lot of streaming. Woo. Thanks, everybody.